Andres, uh, right here. Uh, first of all, congratulations on the win. What are your initial thoughts after a performance like that? It was good, man. I think that um, yeah, I, I don't want to beat myself up. I, I missed a couple big opportunities to finish early. I think that um, I, I got to give myself credit. You know, I, I really didn't have much of a training camp for this, but I couldn't say no to the opportunity. So, you know, I, I came out and made the most of it, and, and I'm proud of myself for that. What were the moments that you felt like you missed out on? Uh, I mean, obviously I had the mounted guillotine in the first first minute, I think it was. Um, I had that anaconda at one point. I had the back. I couldn't finish the red naked. So it's good, man. Like, it's just such a different look out there rolling-wise than it is in practice. So the more experience you get out there, you kind of have a better idea in practice, like what, where you need to adjust those finishes. Was, was that all just because of how tough he was, or were you making technical mistakes in there that you need to fix on the back on the drawing board? I think that uh, a little bit of both. I mean, he was slippery, uh, and, and he was defending the back the right way. You know, he, he, he was fighting the hands well. Uh, he, was, he had urgency. Uh, you know, when I, would get to the, when I would get the head wrapped up, the neck wrapped up, he knew he was in danger, and he was like, I got to move. You know, and I felt that from him. But on my end, like... You know, I was kind of like afraid to give everything into those uh, finishes. Um, I mean, in reality, good jujitsu, you shouldn't have to, you know, squeeze hard. But um, nevertheless, like that's why I got the finish with the 15 seconds left. I, I, you know, I knew that there was, wasn't much time left and I could give everything. And heading to this fight, obviously a lot of the narrative surrounding him was his size. Like yeah. he's coming from heavyweight, yeah. and light heavyweight, and now middleweight. Yeah. Was he just like a ma massive human being to deal with in there when you actually finally fought him? Um, he, it's crazy. Like he had like the 72 inch reach and you can even see like in the way in picture, it was almost bizarre. Like this dude's got like, it looked like he had seven inches on me, but like his arms looked so short. Yeah. So, uh, I, I mean, I'm not worried about it, man. Like. Bigger, you know, size. I fight at 85, and, and like Daniel thinks I should be at 170, but I don't mind fighting bigger guys personally. <laughs> a lot of the commentary between Felder and Cormier were they were concerned with your cardio. They yeah. thought you might blow your gas yeah. tank like right in the first round. Were you okay? Who stuck up for me? I don't think they were saying you had bad cardio. Did either think, of them? I think they were saying after you got you missed out a couple right. submissions, they'd be they were concerned maybe you blew. I know. I heard them. I heard them. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, I'm a big muscle bound guy, uh, and I've had issues in the past, but, uh, I mean, that's, those, those, that's three fights away. You know what I mean? Like I've, I think by now I've proven that like, even on five days notice, like I can still fight for 15 minutes and finish, you know, I finish guys when they break. This dude's been training for, you know, he had another Southpaw. He's been training, getting ready for this fight for three months. You know, they, 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 you know, uh, announced this fight, you know, that he had this fight months ago. You know, I had five days notice and, and I'm the one pushing in the third. You know, that means that means something. And finally, oh, I, I, I think you're at a point in the career where you don't maybe you don't call people out specifically. But yeah. is, there, is there a date in mind that you want for I, I'm sure you want a full camp next time. Dude, I'm ready. You know, what I mean, like I love fighting. This is how I pay my bills. Like, I think this is the greatest job in the world. I don't know any other job where, you know, I can fly to Abu Dhabi on five days notice. Um, you know, it, it's simple math like. If you fight three times a year, you make three times X. If you fight five times, you make five times X. And, you know, I don't really uh, save my money well. I want to fight. You know, I want to fight as often as possible. They know who to call. If someone falls out, they know who to call. Was Abu Dhabi ever a destination you wanted to go to? 100%. I remember, like, I mean, we're talking probably 10 years ago, I would listen to Joe Rogan talk about, oh, there's abandoned Ferraris and this and that. There's so much money out there. And I was like, this fantasy world, like, dude, I got to check this place out. Like, I know I can't bring a abandoned Ferrari home, but I want to see what that's all about. With that in mind, how have you found it? I have not found uh, an abandoned Ferrari. No, Are you talking about the place? Yeah, yeah. How'd you, how'd dude, you... it's cool, man. We, we got to drive around a little bit and see, like, the palaces. And, um, man, it's cool. Like, I never seen – I never – dude, I don't even think I've ever been out of the country, honestly. Like, I've seen uh, – you know, it's cool. It's cool. Those palaces are cool. The, the – it's a real, uh, I guess you could call it like a, a cosmopolitan-like area, you know. Uh, the W was super cool. The Hilton was nice. I, I loved it, man. I wish I could have got to go to Dubai and see a little bit more, but other than that, I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed. You mentioned you don't save your money very well. What, <laughs> what do you spend it on? 
Shoot, man. I spent it on my daughter. Like, I'm just trying to get home for see her trick or treat. And uh, I spoil that little girl as much as I can. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. Congrats. Yep. <laughs>